Welcome to the trilogy of chapters uh, related to the promotion P of the marketing, marketing mix, chapters 13, 14, and 15. Uh, while chapter 13 gives you a macro uh, strategy level view of promotional decisions, chapter 14 focuses specifically on selling and chapter 15 focuses on advertising and sales promotion. So chapter 13 mainly touches on the topics of promotional mix, adoption curve, uh, AIDA also called IADA, uh, push-pull strategies and IMC, Integrated Marketing Communications. These would probably be the most commonly used terms in a group of marketing managers that is trying to formulate the promotion P for their company. Uh, so that's the agenda for this chapter. So at the generic level, promotion uh, basically means some form of communication between the seller and the potential buyer in the hope that such communication will positively impact attitudes and behaviors. There are four broad tools uh, for such communication, uh, advertising, publicity, personal selling, and sales promotion. And all and each one of them have their pros and cons and serve a specific uh, purpose. In other words, this is the meaning of the term promotional strategy, also sometimes called promotional mix of the firm. Promotional strategy basically refers uh, to the proportion in which a firm uses the four broad elements of promotion, that is advertising, publicity, personal selling, and sales promotion. You don't want to waste your promotional dollars and you want to develop an optimal promotional mix which will give you the best results. So before you decide on your promotional strategy, you need to remember the specific purpose that each tool serves for the marketer. While advertising can work very well if a company wants to reach the masses quickly, uh, public relations or publicity helps build a positive image. Personal selling helps with building client relationships and sales promotion helps overcome consumer inertia uh, and helps to really make the sale, really close the sale. As you can tell, the proportion in which you will use each tool will depend on certain factors. So let's touch upon a few of uh, those factors here. So factor A, one factor can be the objectives you want to achieve in the marketplace. For example, if you want to inform a large number of customers about your new product, you will likely use a lot of advertising, even if it is quite expensive. No wonder companies are willing to pay close to $5 million uh, for a 30 seconds ad during the Super Bowl. I'm sure you're aware of that. Why are companies willing to pay that kind of money? Because 100 million people are watching the Super Bowl at any point in time. On the other hand, if you if you want to uh, on the on the other hand, if you want to pursue your customers to actually buy, then you will need to spend money on sales promotion tools such as product sampling, uh, giving appropriate discounts, etc. The second factor that can impact promotional mix is the IADA concept that you read about in the textbook. If most of your customers are at the attention or interest stage in the, in, in, the, in the initial stages, then you can use tools such as advertising or public relations to get them started and get moving. However, for the later stages of building strong desire among customers to buy or to actually help customers take the buying decision, you will need to spend promotional resources on tools such as personal selling or sales promotion. The third factor that influences promotional mix is the stage of product life cycle that your product happens to be in. Again, in early stages when there is little competition in the market and customers do not know about your offering, 
advertising, public relations, etc., might be more potent tools for educating the customers. While later stages of maturity and decline will call for heavy use of sales promotion tools and an aggressive selling effort in, in meeting the competition. And lastly, the choice of promotional tools will differ based on your primary audience as your product moves through the product life cycle. As you read in the text that in the beginning, most of the buyers fall in the category of innovators and early adopters whose behaviors are very different from those of early majority, late majority, and laggards. Uh, customer groups that tend to buy the product quite late in the PLC. So the last three they buy a little later. For example, uh, innovators seek out information themselves. Their, their behaviors are different. They do not get influenced by salespeople and do not consume the mainstream media such as TV advertisements or newspapers, etc. They look for information themselves. And hence, mainstream media advertising or personal selling might be a bit of a waste of resources for tapping innovators. Whereas both these tools might be quite useful for tapping the early and the late majority. The percentages mentioned here are about the average percentage of each category of customers across industries and products. And hence, uh, they are often used by managers as a good thumb rule to follow. And lastly, it depends on your overall strategy in the marketplace as well. If you are using a push strategy where you are motivating channel partners to sell more, there isn't much point in spending your promotional dollars on advertising. You would rather spend money on trade promotion. On the other hand, if you are using a pull strategy where you are directly motivating customers to find out and buy your product, then advertising will be helpful in creating that pull. And here is the pictorial representation of what is meant by push versus pull strategy. I hope it is clear to you by now. And lastly, uh, companies have realized that in order to develop and maintain a strong and consistent positioning in the market, the promotional effort must be consistent and seamless across the various promotional tools which are used by the company. The four broad promotional tools cannot work in contradiction to each other and must be very carefully coordinated so that the customer gets a consistent message every time. That's really critical to clear positioning. This is often referred to, the, this, this, this coordination is often referred to as integrated marketing communication. And, and many companies these days, they have positions such as brand equity managers, whose job actually is to make, make sure that all of the promotion effort of the company, in other words, all of the communication with customers is very well coordinated and customers get a consistent and complete message in the process. Leading, there are some leading IMC programs in the country, such as the Carnegie Mellon University or Northwestern University, and they train you exactly how to do that well. And this is the key message from this chapter, and it says that you must strike a balance between effectiveness and efficiency. Uh, money is limited, and you must choose your promotional tools very thoughtfully in order to get the most out of your budget. And lastly, uh, some key terms here. Uh, that's all in this chapter. Uh, bye for now.